Reiki 2 Lesson 1 An Introduction to the Second Degree A Moment of Reflection First Degree Reiki is the beginning of an exciting and profound journey filled with self-discovery, personal change, love, growth, new experiences and an immeasurable sense of bonding with a higher power. It takes most people from a position of scepticism and propels them into a new understanding of life. Reiki opens up doors to new dimensions, to things we never dreamt possible, and gives us access to the purest, unconditional love available. Reiki is pure energy. It is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. Reiki is available to all who wish to tap into it, accept it, and become one with its energy and wisdom. Words cannot adequately describe Reiki. It needs to be experienced. Every person experiences Reiki in different ways. That is why it's impossible to define Reiki clearly in words. Whether you experience Reiki as a treatment from a Reiki practitioner or by attending a workshop, it will change your life for the better if you're open to the energy and allow it to envelop your body, mind and spirit. The second degree. The second degree is the next giant step towards understanding and becoming fully attuned to Reiki. Everyone who wants to study and master the second degree must first have already completed the first degree, either in a workshop or via a home study course. Students need to have been given the first degree attunements and the knowledge required to skillfully work with Reiki. Unlike the first degree, students normally would have obtained experience, skill, and a level of intuitive understanding towards the unlimited power of Reiki. Most second degree students no longer fear or harbour scepticism towards Reiki. They are normally enthusiastic and excited about the prospect of enhancing their skills and understanding. It is often recommended that the student, stroke practitioner, takes time after the first degree workshop to assimilate and incorporate the teachings of Dr. Yasui into their practice and daily life before attending a second degree workshop. Make sure you're attending the second degree workshop for the right reasons. Like the first degree, most people feel they are drawn at the appropriate time to the next level of Reiki. Often an event or strong feeling can direct you towards this new path. The main criteria for attending the workshop is that you personally feel ready to go forward with Reiki. Trying to understand how the second degree works. It is almost impossible to explain how second degree Reiki actually works in a way that everyone can understand and accept it. To try to scientifically and logically grasp how the universal life force functions is beyond human intelligence. Like so many things in life, although we do not fully understand how they work, we still use them to improve our lives. Many people would find it extremely difficult to explain how electricity, televisions, faxes, computers, telephones and microwaves or the internet works for example. However, not being able to comprehend how they work doesn't stop people using them. Likewise, although no one can completely explain how Reiki works, it shouldn't stop you using and trusting in its ability to improve your life and the life of the people you work with. When you study, experience and work with the teachings and techniques of the second degree, you'll be able to make your own judgment on how you feel it works. Alternatively, you could simply do what we recommend and just believe in its infinite wisdom and let go of any doubts and fears. However, for those who wish a brief insight into the second degree, we will attempt to justly explain our own understanding of how we believe Reiki works. Reiki is omnipresent, present everywhere at the same time. Reiki is omnipotent, absolute and infinite power. Reiki is omniscient, infinite wisdom and knowledge. The universal life force connects all living things together like a vast ocean. As droplets in this ocean, we are communicating with and are connected to all the other droplets in this ocean on an unconscious level. Similarly, every cell in the human body has its own individual position and responsibility. However, each cell is also unequivocally connected to and is unconsciously communicating with all the other 50 trillion cells in the body. Deepak Chopra, in his book Quantum Healing, also talks about how the entire universe is connected. He explains how particles that are separated by immense distances of time and space know what one another are doing. When an electron, for example, jumps into a new orbit on the outside of an atom, the anti-electron, the positron, paired with it must also react no matter where it lives in the universe. Each particle in our universe has an intelligence that communicates across time and space. Scientists studying the behaviours of monkeys on the coast of Japan noticed one day a particular monkey had begun dipping his sweet potatoes into salt water before eating them. Shortly afterwards, they found all the monkeys within the colony were also dipping their potatoes into salt water. The scientists assumed that monkeys were just copying each other. 
until they discovered monkeys in other parts of the world had also begun dipping their potatoes into salt water. The monkeys were communicating through an unknown intelligence across time and space. The scientists label this intelligent communication morphic resonance. Interestingly, another study found when giraffes began causing serious damage to trees by eating more of the tree than normal, the trees responded by increasing the amount of tannin in their leaves. This defensive action made the leaves too bitter for the giraffes to eat. Scientists discovered the trees were communicating with gases, an energy with intelligence. Likewise, Reiki is also an energy with intelligence. This concludes Lesson 1. Please move on now to Lesson 2. Reiki 2, Lesson 2. Gasho, the first pillar of Reiki. The five Reiki principles which are taught in Reiki Level 1 are based on the three pillars of Reiki, Gasho, Reijiho, and Chiraiyo. In this lesson we are going to discuss the first pillar of Reiki, Gasho. Gasho, placing the two palms together. Gasho literally means two hands coming together. It is a ritual gesture formed by placing the hands or palms together in the prayer or praying hands position, as illustrated, and is the most fundamental and also the most frequently used of all the hand gestures, also known as mudras, in the practice of Buddhism. Gasho implies recognition of the oneness of all beings and is used to express gratitude and respect, for focus, to prevent wandering of the mind, to bring oneself into dynamic balance, and to express the one mind, totality, congruence of being. There are actually two primary forms of traditional gasho. They are known as formal gasho. This is used in formal situations such as rituals and religious services. The hands are brought together in front of the face, fingers straight pointing up, palms pressing together. Elbows are raised, forearms at about 30 degree angles to the floor, fingertips at the same level as the top of the nose but hands roughly a fist distance to the front or the tip of the nose. The eyes are focused on the tips of the middle fingers. The formal gasho helps establish a reverential alert attitude. This gesture is used to show reverence. Mushin gasho. This form of gasho is used primarily in greetings. Here the hands are held loosely together, the tips of the fingers, thumbs still touch, yet there is a little space between the palms. The forearms are at about a 45 degree angle to the floor. The hands are still held at the equivalent or approximate one fist distance in front of the tip of the nose, but the hands are lower in front of the mouth, with the fingertips at the level just below the nose. The eyes are focused on the tip of the middle fingers. Many people also perform Mushin Gasho with hands positioned in front of the chest at a level just above the heart. Beyond the standard primary gasho, there are a number of other special versions of this found in Buddhism. For example, the lotus gasho. This is almost identical to Mushin gasho, however the fingers are bent slightly more and the tips of the middle fingers are held about an inch apart. The lotus gasho is primarily used by priests during particular ceremonies or rites. The diamond gasho, also called the gasho of oneness with all life, this is almost identical to the Mushin gasho. However, the fingers are perfectly straight and interlocked. As with the lotus gasho, the diamond gasho is primarily used by priests during particular ceremonies or rites. Dr. Mikhail Yasui taught a meditation called the gasho meditation. This meditation was practiced at the beginning of every Reiki workshop and meeting. Yasui instructed his students to practice the meditation each morning and evening for 5 to 20 minutes. Gasho is so simple that anyone can practice it alone or in a group meditation. We recommend you try it, and only if you enjoy it and find it beneficial, commit to practicing it every day for at least 30 days. During this time you could also keep a meditation journal to record your experiences with Gasho and details of any benefits you have noticed over the course of the month. Many find that the Gasho meditation brings more focus and clarity into their lives and enables them to become more relaxed, centered and more productive and creative during their daily life. The Gasho meditation Take time out for 5 to 20 minutes a day. Sit down, close your eyes and place your hands together in front of your chest in the prayer position. Focus your attention at the point where the two middle fingers meet. Let go of everything else. If your mind wanders, acknowledge the thoughts, let it go and just refocus returning to the point where the middle fingers meet. Repeat the five Reiki principles either aloud or internally. 
If you find it uncomfortable to hold your hands in gasho for 5 to 20 minutes, simply let your hands kept together slowly down onto your lap, finding a more comfortable position to continue the meditation. You may also observe energy in the form of heat, cold or images. Just let it go and return your focal point to the tips of your two middle fingers. If you need to adjust your posture, move slowly, deliberately and consciously. It is easier and better to meditate with a straight spinal column, keeping your head still. If you suffer from back problems and find it difficult to sit still, try sitting on a straight back chair with a few pillows for comfort. Alternatively, you can sit on the floor on a few cushions with your back against the wall. You could even try meditating while lying down on a sofa or a bed. But you may find you fall asleep, which at night is okay, but in the morning could leave you late for work or other engagements. Please try the short 5-minute gasho meditation below this video. Reiki 2, Lesson 3 Reiji Ho, the second pillar of Reiki. Translated into English, Reiji means indication of the Reiki power. Ho means methods. Reiji Ho consists of three short rituals that are carried out before each treatment. Step 1. Fold your hands in front of your chest in the gasho position with your eyes closed. Now connect with the Reiki power. This is very simple. Ask the Reiki power to flow through you. Within a few seconds you will become aware of the Reiki energy flowing through you. It may enter through your crown chakra, or you experience it in your hands or heart chakra. Secondary practitioners or Reiki masters can use the distant healing symbol to connect with the Reiki power. Repeat the wish three times in your mind that Reiki may flow. Then send the mental healing symbol and seal it all with the power symbol. As soon as you feel the energy, continue on to the next step. Step 2. Pray for the recovery and or health of the patient on all levels. Let Reiki do what is required. Raise your hands up, still in gasho, in front of your third eye, and ask the Reiki power to guide your hands to where the energy is needed. Step 3. Then use and follow your intuition. This technique guides your hands like magnets to the places on the body that need treatment. Trusting your intuition when you first practice Reiki can be either easy or difficult. Trust in the phenomenon that is Reiki. Totally detach yourself from seeking possible outcomes. Just let go and believe in Reiki. Invite and allow Reiki to call, i.e. guide, draw your hands automatically, spontaneously, to any areas of the recipient's body that may be in need of treatment. Allow your hands to move where they are drawn. Let go, trust, resist the urge to do. When it comes to letting Reiki guide you, different people may receive their guidance in different ways. Some may simply experience pure spontaneous movement, as if being pulled magnetically while some may experience images in their mind's eye of where the treatment is needed. Others may hear where Reiki is needed, and so on. If nothing seems to happen, if you are not aware of receiving guidance, and when first performing Reiji it isn't always necessarily that obvious, recall the precepts, don't worry. It will come in time, and when it does, you will know. Reiki will guide you. Reiki will flow. And as usual, the flow will taper off when the area has taken sufficient treatment and then your hands will be called to the next area. When there are no more areas requiring treatment, or as in sometimes the case, there are no areas at all requiring treatment, your hands will be guided to rest palms down on your thighs or in your lap. Conclude Reiji Ho by once more performing Gasho. Reiji Ho, in a nutshell, step one, hands in Gasho, connect to Reiki. Step two, pray for the recipient's health and well-being. raise hands to the third eye, Ask the Reiki power to guide your hands to where it is needed. Step 3. Use your intuition. Reiki 2 Lesson 4. Chirayo, the third pillar of Reiki. Chirayo means treatment in English. The person giving the treatment holds their dominant hand above the client's crown chakra, see illustration, and waits until there is an impulse or inspiration, which the hand then follows. During the treatment, the Reiki practitioner uses their intuition, giving free rein to their hands, sensing painful areas of the body to work on and moving from those areas only when they no longer hurt or until the hands lift from the body on their own and find a new area to treat. The breath. The bridge between the body and consciousness is the breath. In all esoteric traditions, there is knowledge of the special meaning of the breath. Just as we breathe in oxygen for basic survival, we also inhale the universal life force, which nourishes and cleanses our mind, body and spirit. Dr. Yasui taught a breathing technique called Joshin Kokayu Ho, which means breathing to cleanse the spirit. Joshin 
Kokayu Ho. Begin by sitting down comfortably and relaxing your body, keeping your spine as straight as possible. Inhale slowly through your nose. Imagine that as well as breathing in air through your nose, you're also drawing Reiki energy through your crown chakra. Become aware of how you experience Reiki being drawn through the crown chakra while you continue to breathe calmly and serenely. Over time with practice, the positive effect of this exercise and a strong feel of the energy flowing through you will become more apparent. During this breathing exercise, you will feel your entire body become invigorated and enriched with Reiki energy. Draw your breath deep down into your belly, down to the energy center just below the navel. In Japan, this center is called Tanden, and the Chinese call it Tantian. The Tanden, or Tantian. The Tanden is the center of the body, the seat of a person's vitality. Hold your breath and the energy you have drawn in with it in the Tanden for a few seconds. Your aim is to supply the body with love and energy. Be gentle. While holding your breath, imagine that the energy from the Tanden spreads throughout your entire body and energizes and invigorates it. Now exhale through your mouth. While doing this, imagine that the breath and the Reiki energy not only flow out of your mouth, but also from your fingertips and the tips of your toes and out of your hand and foot chakras. This is how we become a clear channel of Reiki. The energy flows into us from the cosmos and back again to the cosmos. The energy cycle from the macrocosm to the microcosm and vice versa has been completed. In Tai Chi, the following is always recommended for similar breathing exercises. Keep the tongue on the roof of your mouth, touching your front teeth while inhaling, and then let it come down and rest on the bottom of the mouth while exhaling. Experiment with this technique while you treat yourself and others. Reiki 2, Lesson 5, Namaste. I honor the place in you in which the entire universe dwells. I honor the place in you which is of love, of truth, of light, and of peace. When you are in that place in you, and I am in that place in me, we are one. The gesture, or mudra, of Namaste is a simple act made by bringing together both palms of the hands before the heart, and lightly bowing the head. In the simplest form, it is accepted as a humble greeting straight from the heart and reciprocated accordingly. Namaste is a composite of two Sanskrit words, nama and te. Te means you, and nama means to bend, incline or bow. The meaning of these two words together is a sense of submitting oneself to another with complete humility. The word nama is split into two, na and ma. Na signifies negation and ma represents mine. The meaning would then be not mine, the import being that the individual soul belongs entirely to the supreme soul, which is identified as residing in the individual towards whom the namaste is directed. Indeed, there is nothing that the soul can claim as its own. Namaste is thus the necessary rejection of I, and the associated phenomena of egotism. It is said that ma in nama means death spiritually, and when this is negated with na, it signifies immortality. The whole action of namaste unfolds itself at three levels, mental, physical and verbal. The mental submission is in the spirit of total surrender of the self. This is parallel to the devotion one expresses before a chosen deity, also known as bhakti. The devotee who thus venerates with complete self-surrender is believed to partake the merits or qualities of the person or deity before whom he performs this submission. A transaction can only be between equals, between individuals who share some details in common. Hence, by performing namaste before an individual, we recognize the divine spark in him or her. Further, by facilitating our partaking of these divine qualities, Namaste makes us aware of these very characteristics residing within our own selves. Simply put, Namaste intimates the following. The God in me greets the God in you. The spirit in me meets the same spirit in you. In other words, it recognizes the equality of all and pays honor to the sacredness of all and everyone, regardless of age, status or wealth. Translated into a bodily act, Namaste is deeply rich in symbolism. Firstly, the proper performance of Namaste requires that we blend the five fingers of the left hand exactly with the fingers of the right hand. The significance behind this simple act in fact governs the entire gamut of our active life. The five fingers on the left hand represent the five senses of karma, and those on the right hand the five organs of knowledge. Hence it signifies that our karma or action must be in harmony and governed by rightful knowledge, prompting us to think and act correctly. 
Namaste recognizes the duality that has forever existed in this world and suggests an effort on our part to bring these two forces together, ultimately leading to a high unity and non-dual state of oneness. Some of these dual elements which the gesture of Namaste marries together and unifies as one include God and Goddess, man and woman, heaven and earth, sun and moon, theory and practice, wisdom and method, pleasure and pain, astral body and etheric body, mind and body, conscious and unconscious, intellect and instinct, reason and emotion, thought and feeling, word and meaning. Finally, the gesture of Namaste is unique also in the sense that its physical performance is accompanied by a verbal utterance of the word Namaste. This practice is equivalent to the chanting of a mantra. The sonority of the sacred sound Namaste is believed to have quasi-magical value, corresponding to a creative energy change. This transformation is that of aligning oneself in harmony with the vibration of the cosmos itself. At its most general, Namaste is a social transaction. It is usual for individuals to greet when they meet each other. It is not only a sign of recognition, but also an expression of happiness at each other's sight. This initial conviviality sets the positive tone for the further development of a harmonious relationship. Namaste as a greeting is thus a mosaic of movements and words, constituting affirmative thoughts and sentiments. In human society, society, it is an approach mechanism, brimming with social, emotional and spiritual significance. In fact, it is said that in Namaste, the hands are put together like a knife, so that people may cut through all differences that may exist, and immediately get to the shared ground that is common to all people of all cultures. In this context, the comparison with the widely prevalent handshake is inevitable. Though shaking hands is an extremely intimate gesture, Namaste scores over it in some ways. Primarily is the one that Namaste is a great equaliser. You do Namaste with God and not shake hands. A king or president cannot shake hands with the large multitude they are addressing, but Namaste serves the purpose. It is the same gesture one would have exchanged with a king when with him alone, so no incongruity arises. In the absence of Namaste, those facing a large audience will have to make do with a wave of a hand a much less congenial greeting, and indeed which does not state the essential qualities of all people, but highlights the difference even more. But on a parallel level, it has been conjectured that both the Namaste and the handshake developed out of a desire on the part of both parties to show themselves to be unarmed and devoid of malicious intention. The outstretched hand and the palm joined together both establish the proponents as disarmed and show they come in peace. As much as yoga is an exercise to bring the levels of our existence, including the physical and intellectual, in complete harmony with the rhythms of nature, the gesture of namaste is a yoga in itself. It isn't surprising that any yogic activity begins with the performance of this deeply spiritual gesture. The Buddhists went further and gave it the status of mudra, that is a gesture displayed by deities, where it was known as the Anjala Mudra. The word Anjala itself is derived from the root Anj, meaning to adorn, honour, celebrate or anoint. According to Indologist Renov, meditation depends upon the relationship between the hands, mudras, the mouth, mantras and the mind, yoga. The performance of Namaste is comprised of all these three activities. Thus, Namaste is in essence equivalent to meditation, which is the language of our spirit in conversation with God and the perfect vehicle for bathing us in the rivers of divine pleasure. Reiki 2 Lesson 6 New Possibilities with Reiki 2 The second degree brings new possibilities. After the initiation ceremony, the second degree practitioner is taught how to use the sacred Reiki symbols. These symbols are the keys that give the practitioner access to the full potential of the universal life force. There are three major new skills gained through the study of second degree Reiki. They are as follows. The Reiki practitioner can increase and focus the universal life force. This can be used for self-healing or to heal others. The Reiki practitioner can complete a full Reiki treatment in about 15 minutes, compared to the normal 90 minutes required by a first degree practitioner. The Reiki practitioner can help more people in less time. The Reiki practitioner can send distant healing across time and space. Through the symbols, the second degree practitioner can connect to another person or being anywhere in the universe, either in the past, present or in the future. As you incorporate the Reiki symbols into your life, you will find unlimited uses for them. The greater your understanding and imagination, the more varied applications you will discover and develop.
After the initiation ceremony, the student will find that their personal vibratory level has heightened by as much as four times that of the first degree attunement. Their psychic abilities also increase by between 80 to 100%. As with all attunements, the student will go through a 21-day detoxification process as their mind, body and spirit finds equilibrium. Reiki 2 Lesson 7 The Sacred Reiki Symbols the symbols are a very special, unique and important part of Reiki that helps the Reiki practitioner connect more effectively to the universal life force. They are the keys that unlock the flow of Reiki and enhance and amplify the universal life force. You can of course access the Reiki energy without the symbols as taught in the first degree. However, the sacred Reiki symbols are very important and can be harnessed by the practitioner to strengthen and focus the Reiki energy during a Reiki treatment session. Dr. Yasui's four sacred symbols are known as the traditional Reiki symbols. The first three symbols are taught to students during the second degree, while the fourth and master symbol is taught to third degree Reiki students. Students are initiated, stroke attuned to the symbols during the attunement ceremony. Once a student has been attuned to the Reiki symbols, like being attuned to Reiki, the student will be linked at a conscious and subconscious level to those symbols for life. Reiki will continue to flow even if you do not consciously use the symbols during a Reiki session. As your understanding and appreciation of Reiki develops through daily practice, you will be able to choose for yourself to what extent you use the symbols in your practice. It is important to remember that just like the Reiki energy, the Reiki symbols can do no harm. They can only be used for good. During the attunement ceremony, the Reiki master uses the symbols to transfer and link the sacred symbols with the Reiki energy and the student, so that the student from that point forward can either consciously or unconsciously draw upon this new amplified Reiki energy quickly and easily to treat themselves and or others in the future. Once the second degree Yasui Reiki student has studied and assimilated the first three symbols, their healing abilities are immediately heightened. Without the second degree attunement, however, the symbols will not work and are worthless. Makai Yasui originally taught Reiki without the use of symbols. However, he introduced them after a while to help his students better understand and more easily connect to the Reiki energy. Dr. Hayashi and Madame Takata both used symbols when they taught Reiki to others. The Reiki symbols are now an integral part of studying Reiki and are a very important part of the attunement ceremony. The four symbols were found in the Sanskrit Sutras by Dr. Mikai Yasui. He realized during his time of fasting and meditation on Mount Kuriyama that these esoteric symbols would enable him and others to be finely tuned into Reiki, just like tuning a television or radio signal. The symbols were the tools he needed to focus the Reiki energy, enabling him and others to bridge the gap between the healer and the recipient, across which the universal life force could be drawn and sent as necessary. These sacred symbols are also for self-healing. They dissolve old destructive patterns and increase the intuitive abilities of the student, while raising their conscious awareness and peace of mind to a new high. Transcendental by nature, the Reiki symbols connect the practitioner and the recipient directly to the higher self or higher consciousness, the Rei. The symbols are similar to energy transformers that boost and expand the energy field. When a symbol is drawn or visualized in the outer realm, it becomes a mirror image of another symbol on an inner realm. Simultaneously, a connection occurs which has ramifications on all levels, both inner and outer. It is vitally important that at the moment of drawing the symbols, the intention of the Reiki practitioner is absolutely clear and positive. Visualize or imagine the symbol as a live energy. Many see that energy as a white light. The symbols can be drawn mentally and transferred from the Reiki practitioner's third eye onto the various chakra and hand positions of the recipient's body. Some Reiki practitioners draw the symbols on the roof of their mouth with their tongue before transferring the symbols to a recipient, while other Reiki practitioners simply draw the symbols on their hands or on the bodies of the recipients. If you are going to draw them, please ensure that no one sees them. Reiki 2 Lesson 8 The First Sacred Symbol Chokurei The first symbol is the Chokurei. It is the power symbol and the activator often called the light switch, as it turns on and activates all the other symbols. Cho means to cut, remove illusion in order to see the whole. Ku means penetrating, imagine a sword slicing through. Rei means universal, omnipresent, present everywhere. The chokurei cuts through and removes resistance. In Japanese, choku means imperial command, immediate. The esoteric meaning of the symbol is discreation. Illness and disease are creations being constantly recreated. How to draw the choker A? Stroke 1. Draw a horizontal line from left to right. 
Stroke two, draw a vertical line from top to bottom. Stroke three, draw three and a half decreasing circles finishing on the vertical line as shown. The choker ray symbol discreates. This is the symbol that turns on the second degree energy. Without this symbol, the practitioner is still channeling only first degree energy. It can be used alone or as an activator for all the other symbols. Reiki's infinite wisdom will bring about whatever is needed. How to use the choker ray symbol. There are six main ways of transferring the choker ray symbol from yourself onto your clients. They are as follows. Visualize or imagine a brilliant white choker ray symbol projected from your third eye chakra onto the back of your hands as you rest them on the different hand positions of your client during a Reiki treatment. Visualize or imagine a brilliant white choker ray symbol on the palms of your hands before you place your hands onto your client just before you perform the Reiki treatment. Draw the choker ray symbol on the roof of your mouth with your tongue. Then project the symbol onto the back of your hands as they rest on your client during a Reiki treatment. Draw the choker ray symbol on the roof of your mouth with your tongue. Then project the symbol onto the palms of your hands before you place them onto your client. Just before you perform the Reiki treatment. Draw the choker ray symbol onto the palms of your hands using your index finger. Then place your hands onto your client. Draw the choker ray symbol in the air with your index finger in the direction you wish the Reiki to go. Important note, never allow anyone to observe you drawing the symbols unless they are a second degree practitioner or a Reiki master. To activate the symbols you have just drawn, you must always silently intone the words choker ray three times. The symbol will not work without the words silently intoned at the same time. If the situation calls for it, write the problem down on a piece of paper and draw the choker ray symbol over the top of the writing. Remember to silently intone the words choker ray three times. Then place the paper in the palm of your hands for a few minutes. Some examples of uses for the choker ray symbol. The choker ray turns on the second degree Reiki energy. The choker ray activates all other symbols. The choker ray protects you on all levels. The choker ray will bring about whatever is needed in a situation. The choker ray cleanses energies in your home, office, crystals, car, etc. The choker ray brings balance into your life. The choker ray can be sewn into your children's clothes. The choker ray can be sent under a stamp on a letter. The choker ray can be placed under a sticker on a gift. The choker ray can be used on your food, drink, plants, animals, etc. The choker ray can be used to help your career. Draw it on your desk, under the cash register, documents, letters, the telephone, your diary, computers, contract pads, tax or VAT returns. The choker ray can be used on airlines, trains, pilots, drivers, etc. The choker ray can be drawn invisibly under your doormat, under wallpaper, in cupboards, behind pictures, on your front door. You're only limited by your imagination. As you incorporate the symbols into your life, you will use Reiki on everything. Reiki 2 Lesson 9 The Second Sacred Symbol Seihaiki The second symbol is the Seihaiki. This is the emotional and mental symbol, used primarily for emotional and mental healing. Seihaiki balances the right and left brain. Sei means birth, coming into being. Haiki means balance, equilibrium. How to use the Seihaiki symbol the Seihaiki symbol can be transferred from yourself to your client in the same six ways already shown in the previous Choker Ray lesson. How to draw the Seihaiki. Stroke 1. Draw a three-part zigzag line as shown. Stroke 2. Draw a vertical line from top to bottom. Stroke 3. Draw a curved line from top to bottom. Stroke 4. Draw a curved line from top to bottom. Stroke 5 and 6. Draw two curved lines as shown from top to bottom. To activate the Seihaiki symbol, you must first draw the choker ray, intoning the words choker ray three times. You then draw the Seihaiki symbol on top of the choker ray and intone the word Seihaiki three times. Finally, you draw the choker ray on top of the Seihaiki, remembering to intone the words choker ray three times. As illustrated, this forms the Reiki sandwich. In a situation where you feel your client is suffering from some sort of emotional or mental block, the Reiki sandwich can be used to release any blockages and allow the healing process to begin. Visualize or imagine the Reiki sandwich coming out of your third eye chakra and entering the third eye chakra of your client. As you intone the words, add the rider if it should be for their highest good. Alternatively, draw the symbols on your hands and then place them over your client's third eye. This is often used when you are treating a person for addictions, weight loss or unwanted habits. Keep a box of tissues handy as this can often cause the client to become weepy and emotional. The Reiki sandwich can be used on all the normal hand positions. 
However, the third eye chakra position must be treated with the utmost care and responsibility. The Reiki sandwich will take the practitioner deep into the client's mind. It is vitally important to guard your thoughts as they can be picked up by your client. Ask the higher self or your client for consent before working on the third eye chakra. Your own intuition will give you the answer. If you are treating a person who is suffering from a disease such as cancer, leukemia or AIDS, visualize thousands of psychiatry symbols penetrating every cell in your client's body. When you find something you do not understand or have a question that needs answering, write it down on a piece of paper and draw the Reiki sandwich over the top of it. Your answer will come to you intuitively. Example of uses for the Seihaiki symbol. The Seihaiki works on blockages and resistances in the body. The Seihaiki works on long-standing problems. The Seihaiki works on drink, drugs and smoking addictions. The Seihaiki works on anorexia nervosa and bulimia. The Seihaiki works on relationship problems. The Seihaiki works on nervousness, fears and phobias. The Seihaiki works on anger, sadness and other emotions. The Seihaiki works on grief and bereavement. The Seihaiki works on improving memory. The Seihaiki works on enhancing affirmations. The Seihaiki works on improving intuition and inspiration. The Seihaiki works on calming negative atmospheres. The Seihaiki balances energies in your home, work and crystals. The Seihaiki works on calming arguments. The Seihaiki works on improving poor communication. The Seihaiki protects you on every level. The Seihaiki protects you from losing personal belongings. The Seihaiki protects you while travelling. The Seihaiki helps you find lost articles. The Seihaiki improves creativity. The Seihaiki helps with coma patients, head injuries. The Seihaiki works on others as well as yourself. Never use Reiki to manipulate others. Misuse is one way of losing your gift. Reiki 2 Lesson 10 The Third Sacred Symbol Hon Sha Zei Shonen the third Yasui symbol is the Hon Sha Zei Shonen. This symbol is known as the distant or absent healing symbol and is used to transcend time and space, past and present and future. Like all the other symbols, the Chokure symbol is used to first activate the Hon Sha Zei Shonen. The Hon Sha Zei Shonen gives the Reiki practitioner the ability to channel Reiki across space. Distance becomes no object. Reiki can be sent to a person across the room in a therapy situation or channeled to a person in another part of the world. The Hon Sha Zei Shonen also allows the practitioner to bridge time from the present to the past or future. Reiki can be sent back to heal a childhood problem or even further still to a past life. Future situations such as operations, interviews or business meetings can be greatly improved by sending Reiki in advance. Time has no relevance when the Hon Sha Zei Shonen symbol is used. How to draw the Hon Sha Zei Shonen symbol. When the Hon Sha Zei Shonen symbol is drawn, all strokes are drawn from left to right and from top to bottom. Stroke 1. The first horizontal stroke means number 1, the beginning. Eternity begins in the moment. Stroke 2. The second vertical stroke, which crosses over the first one, means number 10, the end, completion. The Japanese only count up to 10. Stroke 3 and 4, the third and fourth strokes, combine with strokes 1 and 2 and symbolize a tree in Japanese. Esoterically, it means the tree of life, also the tree of death and transformation, of knowledge, evil, desire and resistance. It also represents the tree of timelessness. It cannot die because it was never born. Stroke 5, the fifth horizontal stroke, means the root, the root of the tree, the cause, the essence, the origin. Strokes 1 to 5 combine from the first kanji, hon. Kanji means Japanese writing using Chinese characters, kan, Chinese, ji, character. Stroke 6, the sixth horizontal stroke, symbolizes the land, the earth. Stroke 7, a downward curving line, means becomes, existence. Stroke 8 is a vertical line drawn downwards from the curve line. Stroke 9 is drawn from the left and curves sharply downwards, as shown. Stroke 8 and 9 combined look similar to a lowercase letter n. Stroke 10. Stroke 10 is a horizontal line drawn from the centre of stroke 8. The strokes 8, 9 and 10 form another kanji which translated means the sun. Here we have the sun under the earth. Light coming into existence. The sun about to rise. Stroke 6 through to 10 form the kanji sha which means a person that creates. For example a potter. A potter creates a vase from a lump of clay. He reveals the vase that was hidden in the clay. 
This symbol means what was hidden is brought into being, bringing light onto the earth, the miracle of Reiki. When you place your hand on someone, you are revealing little by little what is already there. Stroke number 11 is a horizontal line drawn from left to right and seals the Sha Kenji. Stroke number 12 is a vertical line drawn from the center of stroke 11 downwards. Stroke number 13 is a vertical line drawn as shown. Stroke number 14 is a horizontal line drawn as shown. Strokes 11 to 14 form the kanji sho, which means right, correct, justice. Stroke number 15 curves downwards to the left as shown. Stroke number 16 curves downwards to the right as shown. Strokes 15 and 16 combined form the kanji ze, which means harmony, acting appropriately, in the correct manner. Remember an energy with intelligence, it always goes where it is needed. Important notes, although the kanji ze is shown after the show, it is spoken before. Stroke number 17 is a horizontal line drawn from left to right as shown. Stroke number 18 is drawn horizontally from left to right parallel to stroke number 17. It then curves downwards and to the left as shown. Stroke 19 curves downwards similar to letter C as shown. Stroke 20 also curves downwards similar to letter C as shown. Finally, stroke number 21 also curves downwards as shown. Stroke 17 to 21 form the final kanji nen, which means the heart, thought, also now in the present moment in time. So let's look at the hon sha ze shonen symbol combined. Hon, the essence or cause. Sha, coming into existence. Ze, harmonizing appropriately. Sho, correctly or justly. Nen, the heart or the thoughts now. How to use the Hon Sha Ze Shonen symbol. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen symbol can be transferred from yourself to your client in the same six ways already shown in the Chokure lesson. To activate the Hon Sha Ze Shonen symbol, you must follow the same procedure used to activate the Sai Haiki symbol. The full Reiki sandwich. The full Reiki sandwich consists of a Chokure plus a Sei Haiki symbol, then another Chokure, then the Hon Sha Ze Shonen symbol, and then finally another Chokure. Remembering to intone the symbols three times as you draw each symbol. Examples of uses for the Hon Sha Ze Shonen symbol. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen symbol works on deep-seated diseases. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen symbol works on long-standing problems. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen channels Reiki to a person in another country. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen channels Reiki to someone in hospital. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen works on groups or large organizations. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen works on towns, cities and countries. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen channels Reiki to disaster or crisis situations. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen channels Reiki to world leaders. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen works on driving tests and examinations. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen works on interviews and meetings. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen works on karmic past life issues. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen works on children while they sleep or rest. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen helps treat patients with burns who cannot be touched or where there is risk of infection through touch. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen heals the inner child. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen heals the past, present and future. The Hon Sha Ze Shonen works on world peace. You are only limited by your imagination. Believe and succeed. Reiki 2 Lesson 11 Distant or Absent Reiki Healing The three Yasui Reiki symbols are the keys that unlock the doors to absent and distant healing. It is important to study and master these symbols. Practice drawing them until you can draw and visualize all three of them without referring to these pages. There are many ways to channel Reiki through the symbols. As you begin to practice and work with the symbols, you will discover which method you prefer. It is not important to understand how it works. Belief and the right attitude make the real difference. Leave the logical, skeptical part of your brain to one side and experience through practice how powerful and effective absent and distant healing can be. A wonderful way to prove to yourself that it works is to send distant healing to a friend's sick pet. Animals are not influenced by hype. When you discover how you're able to treat an animal by sending Reiki through the symbols, you will remove any doubts about its validity and concentrate on perfecting this profound form of healing. Preparing to send distant Reiki healing. With practice, you'll be able to send Reiki healing energy at will, whenever it's required. You'll be able to perform a distant healing session no matter what the environment or location you find yourself in, or no matter what distractions may be around you at the time. You will have the ability through practice to simply filter out everything else and focus in on the job at hand, sending Reiki to a person, place or event, etc.
This ability can be extremely useful, especially if you need to send Reiki in the event of an emergency, and you find yourself out shopping or at work or at a sporting event, etc., for example. Initially, when you first practice distant healing, try to follow these guidelines below to help you connect and perform with the healing session correctly. Find a quiet place and ensure you have enough time so you won't be interrupted. You need to focus on the following. Decide on the distant healing method you're going to use to send Reiki before you begin the session, so you can, when ready, smoothly perform the distant healing for the recipient. Begin by grounding yourself and connecting with Reiki, the universal life force. Just like an in-person Reiki session, you will need to connect with Reiki so that you're in the best position mentally and spiritually to channel Reiki. If you need to, please refer to Reiki 1 Video Lesson 9, Preparing to Treat Others with Reiki. Remember to remove the ego. You are just a channel for Reiki, which will be doing the work and will be traveling across time and space to connect you with the recipient of the distant healing. Ensure you feel the flow of Reiki before you connect with the recipient and start sending Reiki to them. Once you feel the connection with the universal life force, start transmitting the healing Reiki energy using the method you've decided upon earlier. Remember, all methods will work, so try them all so you can decide on your favourite method to use in the future. Keep the distant healing session going for as long as you intuitively feel it should continue. It makes no difference whether it lasts five minutes or an hour. Reiki will go where it's needed and continue to work even after you've closed the session down. An average distant healing session will last about 15 minutes. There is no right or wrong way in distant healing. The key, as always, is in the intention. Always end the Reiki distant healing session with a positive envisioning of the person, place, event or situation you focus on. Go ahead and imagine a different scenario for your own past. After all, your past has an influence on your present thoughts and emotions. Allow Reiki to influence your thoughts and emotions in a new, inspired way. After your distant healing session, release the outcome to the infinite wisdom and infinite love or spirit. Your intellect may know or not know what the best possible outcome is, but Reiki always knows. Make sure you remember to disconnect from the recipient once the session is completed, and wash your hands in cold running water if possible, depending on your location. Always drink a glass of cold water to help ground yourself. Popular methods used to send Reiki distant healing. When you first practice distant healing, it is always best to follow a pre-arranged format that you feel comfortable with so you can remain relaxed and focused on the healing session rather than the mechanics of what you are doing. Practice makes permanent. Like learning to drive a car, in the beginning it can seem overwhelming to think about all the things you need to do and remember to keep the car on the road safely. Within a short space of time, through repetition and practice, you permanently encode the mechanics of driving in your subconscious and you can enjoy the experience of driving. Likewise, once you've mastered the mechanics of performing a distant healing session, you'll be able to just relax and focus on the healing session, and not on what you need to do next. It will become automatic. As you grow in confidence, you can begin to rely more on your intuition to guide you during the future distant healing sessions. Because you don't have the recipient in front of you when you're performing the distant healing, you need to find a way to see what is going on during the distant healing session. Listed below are a number of substitute methods you can use to help you visualize or represent the distant Reiki recipient in your mind. The surrogate method. You can literally use anything as a surrogate to channel Reiki. The most important thing you must do is clearly specify that the surrogate is taking the place of whoever or whatever you're sending Reiki to during the invocation. A photograph, cushions, dolls, teddy bears, pens, crystals, or the details of the person or thing written on a piece of paper are all good examples of a surrogate. Many Reiki practitioners have their favorite surrogate and use it all the time for their distant and absent healing. If you have a soft toy that you cherish, try using that. A ball or small globe can be used as a surrogate to channel Reiki to Mother Earth. We always Reiki our car before each journey by using the car's steering wheel as a surrogate for the car. When we treat people using a surrogate, we prefer to use a teddy bear, as we are able to work more precisely on the various hand positions and chakras. For example, if a person has a sore or left injured leg, we spend more time treating the surrogate teddy bear's left leg. Let us assume, for example, you want to channel Reiki to your mother, who is in hospital in another part of the country or world. Find a photograph of your mother, write down her name, the hospital she's been admitted to, and the hospital ward or room number on a piece of paper. Telephone your mother and ask her for permission to send healing to her. Choose a time between yourselves when you both will be able to relax and won't be disturbed. Place the photo and the piece of paper in your hands. If no one is able to see or hear you, make your normal invocation aloud, adding also that the photo and the piece of paper are to be used as a surrogate for your mother. Important point explaining what a rider is. A rider is similar to a caveat. When you're calling upon Reiki, the universal life force, to help heal our friends, clients, etc., we must remember that we do not control or know what is in the best interest of that client or friend, etc. 
We remove our ego and let Reiki and its infinite wisdom do what is needed based on the client's best interest, not our perception of what we think is best for them. So the rider hands responsibility back to Reiki to do what is needed and go where it is needed. Sometimes you will discover in your future Reiki practice that it's not the right time for whatever reason for that person to receive healing. This can be frustrating especially if the person you want to send healing to is a close family member or friend. But you must respect their higher self's reason for not accepting or wanting healing. So you must always try to ask permission first before you send healing or at least add the rider should it be for their higher good. Focus your attention on your mother and visualize or imagine her lying in a hospital bed or sitting in a chair depending on what you've arranged with her. Holding the photo and piece of paper in your non-dominant hand, draw the full Reiki sandwich over the top with your dominant hand. Remember to intone the Reiki symbols three times and add the rider should it be for a higher good. Close your hands together and imagine sending healing lights to your mother. Keep your hands closed for at least five minutes. As you become more experienced, you'll be able to intuitively work with the different energy levels. Once you've sent the Reiki, take a moment to visualize or imagine your mother getting better. See her leave the hospital and make a full recovery. Trust in the power and wisdom of Reiki to make your vision into a reality. Complete the treatment by thanking the Universal Life Force and any guides or helpers who assisted you in the treatment. Remember the recipient is drawing the Reiki and doing the healing. You are just the channel. They need to be aware and ready to work with you in the healing process. Make sure that they take the time each day to relax and are open to receiving Reiki. If the recipient is not able to spend too much time relaxing each day, you can specify an agreed time for the Reiki treatment to last. All you need to do is write down the agreed length of time for the treatment on the piece of paper. This process, like the normal full hands-on treatment, should be repeated at least four times over four consecutive days. To save yourself time, you can set up the four healing sessions in one go. Simply write on a piece of paper, in addition to the recipient's name and address, the time and dates you wish the Reiki energy to be channeled to them. So if you want to send Reiki for four days, for instance, you would write the four days and the four times of those sessions. You will only need to spend one five to ten minute session channeling Reiki to your client so they receive it over the four different days. Remember the symbols transcend time and space. As long as the recipient takes the time each day to tune into your Reiki signal, they will receive and benefit from the universal life force. Obviously, the stronger your intent and the more time you spend sending Reiki, the stronger and more profound it will be. Like all the treatments, the more practice and experience you gain, the easier and stronger it will get. The thigh and knee method. Another method often used for absent or distant healing is the thigh and knee method. You will need to be seated to perform this treatment. Make your right knee and thigh the surrogate for the head and front of your client. Your right knee is the client's head, your right mid-thigh is your client's body, and the rest of your right thigh is your client's legs and feet. The left knee and thigh represents the back of your client's head and body. Your left knee is the back of your client's head, your mid-left thigh is your client's back, and the rest of your left thigh represents the back of your client's legs and feet. Please see illustration. The treatment takes approximately 15 minutes to complete. Using your left hand for the left knee and thigh and your right hand for the right knee and thigh, work on the three positions for about five minutes each. Draw, visualize, or imagine the three Yasui symbols, the full Reiki sandwich, on each hand position. Remember to intone the words of each Reiki symbol three times. Complete the treatment as normal by thanking the universal life force and finally sweep your client's aura by rubbing your thighs and knees. Visualization techniques. There are two basic ways of using visualization to perform absent or distant healing. The first involves visualizing or imagining the person you wish to treat with Reiki. For example, let's assume you want to treat a close friend who's in hospital. Close your eyes and make your invocation. Repeat your friend's name three times to focus your mind and establish a connection between yourself and your friend in hospital. Transport your friend from the hospital and visualize or imagine them in a miniature form resting in the palms of your hands. Open your eyes and project the symbols from your third eye onto your friend resting in the palm of your hands. Alternatively, you can place your friend in one hand and draw the symbols over your friend with the other hand. Remember to intone the words three times and add the rider should it be for their highest good. Now, gently cup your hands together, keeping your hands closed for five to ten minutes or until you intuitively feel the treatment is complete. Open your hands and visualize or imagine your friend making a full recovery. Visualize or imagine a healing light enveloping your friend. Close your eyes and transport your friend back to the hospital. Say goodbye, leaving the healing light with them to continue and complete the healing session. Complete the treatment by thanking the Universal Life Force and make sure to wash your hands in cold running water. Alternative visualization technique. For this example, let's assume you want to treat a friend's child who has chicken pox. If you also have children, you probably don't want to risk infecting them by treating your friend's child in person. 
Close your eyes and visualize or imagine being in your friend's home. In your imagination, visualize the child lying down on a bed or sitting down in a chair. Make your invocation and then project the three Reiki Yasui symbols onto the child. Conduct a full hands-on treatment in your mind. Visualize or imagine a healing light enveloping the child. Say goodbye, leaving the healing light with them to continue and complete the healing process. Complete the treatment by thanking the universal life force, return to your home or office, open your eyes and remember to wash your hands under cold running water. Reiki 2, Lesson 12, a traditional distant Reiki healing technique. Important note, whenever you perform distant Reiki healing, your intuition or imagination is particularly useful because you won't receive instant feedback directly from the recipient during the distant healing session. Unlike an in-person treatment, you can't observe or experience exactly what the distant recipient is going through, so you will not be able to see if the person is sighing, crying, smiling, coughing, or pick up on any of the more subtle non-verbal communications, stroke responses, like involuntary movements or a change in skin tone, for example. The structure of a traditional Reiki distant healing session. Step 1. Ask for permission to send the distant healing to the recipient. When you are treating someone in person with Reiki, it is safe to assume that you have their permission to treat them with Reiki, otherwise why would they be there? However, when we perform a distant Reiki treatment, we need to ensure that whenever possible, we have the recipient's or close family member of the recipient's permission to channel Reiki to them, so we can maintain good ethical practice and integrity. The decision of whether to send Reiki healing to someone, no matter how in need you may think they are, must remain wherever possible with the individual. Don't force your good intentions to channel healing on someone else against their will. If your offer of Reiki is refused by one person, you can always find someone else who does want to receive the Reiki healing energy. Normally, you will find a person in need of healing will contact you with their request for Reiki healing. The request may come in an email, a note, a text via your website, or verbally during a meeting or phone conversation. Their approach requesting distant healing is your green light, giving you permission to send Reiki. Sometimes you receive a request for distant healing on another's behalf. If you aren't sure of the person's consent, you can choose to take one of the following courses of action. If you decided never to send Reiki to anyone unless they request it personally, you could simply refuse to send Reiki. We wouldn't personally recommend this option. Using Reiki, connect with the person and get their consent intuitively. You can do this by meditating and creating a picture in your mind of the person whom you want to connect with. Be in the room with them and ask them the question in your mind. Do you want to receive long distance Reiki healing from me? If you get a clear yes or no, then proceed accordingly. If you get an urgent or desperate request on another person's behalf, please help my father, son or sister, etc. who is suffering from X disease, you can use the intuitive approach to see if you can proceed, or if you need to proceed immediately, add the rider before you send the Reiki to them, should it be for their highest good. You can also send Reiki with a specific intent so that it flows only where it is desired. In other words, you can send Reiki without explicit approval. But first make clear in your mind that if the person in question doesn't want Reiki, the energy will go to the earth or some other person who wants it. You might say, I am sending this energy to Mary. If she doesn't want or need it, let it go to someone or some event or situation that does need it. You may have strong feelings one way or another about getting permission to send Reiki. Follow what feels right for you. Remember these are only guidelines. All over the world people pray for one another without necessarily asking if the recipient wants the prayer. Some practitioners use this logic to send Reiki without getting permission, but most agree that the path of most integrity requires getting permission. Step 2. The Traditional Distant Reiki Technique Below is the basic Reiki distant healing method we were taught using a photograph by our Reiki master. Remember it is a guide. Try lots of different methods until you find the one that you like the most, or the one that you intuitively feel gets the best results for you and your client. 1. Confirm you have the recipient's permission to send distant Reiki healing. 2. Hold the photo of the recipient in your cupped hands, image pointing up towards your face. Visually draw onto that photo while intoning the names of the following symbols aloud three times, each to create a virtual Reiki sandwich. Chokure, chokure, chokure. Saihiki, saihiki, saihiki. Hon sha ze shonen. Hon sha ze shonen. Hon sha ze shonen. Chokure, chokure, chokure. 3. Say aloud the name of the receiving person three times as you close your hands gently together to cover the photo. 4. Now imagine being in the room with that person so you can see or imagine the recipient in your mind's eye sitting or lying down ready to receive the treatment. 5. Now visually draw the virtual Reiki sandwich onto the body of the recipient, once again intoning the name of the symbols three times. 
6. Conduct a full Reiki session in your mind's eye exactly as you would in person. You can speed up the process so it only takes a few minutes to complete the treatment in your mind. Remember to pay special attention to any known diseases or hotspots or places you are intuitively drawn to during the healing session on the recipient's body. 7. Once the full treatment is completed, end the session by cleansing the recipient's aura and ground them. 8. Now wash your hands in cold running water and ground yourself. Remember to thank Reiki and your guides etc for participating in the distant healing session. Once again this is only a guide. You will come across lots of different Reiki practitioners and Reiki masters and teachers that will offer different variations on every Reiki technique including distant healing. As always intention is the key to success. There is no right or wrong way. Interestingly, Dr. Makei Yasui's preferred distant healing method, which he called Inkaku Chirayo Ho, Inkaku translates to remote or sending, Chirayo to treatment, and Ho to method, uses the visualization technique of photographs, if available to send Reiki to people at a distance, even if the distance is just another room in the same building. Reiki 2 Lesson 13 Examples of Sending Distant Reiki Healing as we know from our study of first degree Reiki, when we think about using Reiki on ourselves or others, we know Reiki will automatically start to flow through us as Reiki practitioners. We can channel or focus the Reiki energy by either placing our hands on or above ourselves or somebody else. One of the most exciting things about becoming a Reiki 2 practitioner is we now move into a whole new realm of Reiki, where the restrictions of time, space and distance no longer exist. We have the power, tools and techniques as advanced practitioners to send Reiki to a person, a group, or even a whole country or continent, even if we're located on the other side of the world. In fact, we can now channel Reiki to the past, present or a future event or situation. In this lesson, we're going to discuss some of the different situations where you may want to or be required to send distant Reiki using the methods you'd learnt in the previous lessons. Just imagine how exciting, rewarding, cathartic and possibly even life-changing it could be to be able to send Reiki to every corner of the planet, to your own or others' past, present and future, to heal people, events, places and things. Send Reiki distantly to people. The majority of distant Reiki healing sessions will involve you sending Reiki to another person over either a short or long distance. The recipient may be at their home or in a hospital or another country suffering from an illness, or they may simply be in need of an energy boost or some relief from a stressful situation. The distance doesn't matter. It could be a mile away or 12,000 miles away on the other side of the world because Reiki can transcend any distance. When you send distant Reiki, you can also set the time it is received. For example, say you live in the UK and you wish to send Reiki to a relative in Australia. It could be a Monday morning in the UK, say 8am GMT, and you know your relative is going into hospital for an operation the next day, Tuesday morning at 10am Australian local time. With the time difference, you will be in bed or too tired or concerned to send Reiki in the middle of the night. The solution is simple with distant Reiki. You can sit down before the event, say the surgery, when you are relaxed and able to focus and simply ask the power and wisdom of Reiki harnessing the power of the Hon Sha Zai Shonen symbol to deliver Reiki to your relative at the time of the operation. In this way you combine features of crossing both time and space during the distance Reiki session. Send Reiki to the future. Reiki can be sent into the future ahead of time to important events such as a wedding, a driving test, exams, competitions, job interviews, doctor or dental appointments, etc. Because you may not always be available at a particular time to send Reiki to someone, or even yourself, this technique is a wonderful way to ensure that the power of Reiki is flowing at that special event to help you or the recipient should it be for their or your higher good. When you send the Reiki, you can state the time and place and person who is to receive the Reiki and the situation if you know that information. For example, if you wanted to send Reiki to your teenage daughter, who was about to sit a number of important exams over a period of three weeks, so she could get the results she required for entrance into her chosen college or university, you could use her printed copy of the exam timetable and a photo of your daughter as the surrogate. Place the surrogate items in your hands Draw visualize the Reiki sandwich on the documents and state something like, I ask that the power and wisdom of Reiki is in and around my daughter, insert her name, as she sits and takes the following examinations, insert the dates and times of each exam, at her, insert the name of the school, high school, located at, insert the address of the school. I ask that the loving healing light of Reiki brings calm, clarity and focus to her so she can achieve her desired examination results and gain access to, insert name of her, desired college or university. I also ask that Reiki envelops her with a bubble of healing white light protecting her from the negative energy of any fellow students in and around her in the examination room. It is important to point out in the above example 
the daughter would still have needed to revise and prepare properly for the examinations. Reiki will of course bring calm and focus and the correct state of mind to the daughter, but it won't answer the questions for her. Send Reiki to the past. The ability to send Reiki healing backwards in time allows you to help heal previous events, experiences and situations. Of course, sending Reiki back along a person's timeline will not change history, but you can heal what results from it. People tend to hold on to their past experiences, both good and bad. Much of the healing done in the present time or now is actually healing the baggage carried forward from the past. For example, suppose you've been suffering for years from a pain in your knee from a past sporting injury. You can return to the scene of the break or accident in your imagination and send Reiki to yourself. Doing so requires good use of imagination and visualization. Set your clear intentions for the specific past experience or time period you want to focus on for the Reiki session. Remember you can send Reiki to a single moment in time, the moment you were born, or to a period of time, the two weeks your grandmother was in hospital. Send Reiki to yourself. You can use distant Reiki in your own life and on yourself in a number of ways including your past. Send Reiki back along your timeline, your past, to events or situations where you experience pain or suffering, or even a breakup or loss. Sending healing Reiki energy to those trying times in the past can bring relief and remove any blockages that may be affecting you now in the present. Healing the past can be both cathartic and liberating, and open up a whole new brighter future for you. If you're going to work on past events, remember the box of tissues, as you may stir up emotions and begin to cry as part of the process. You're present. You could be tired, run down, and in need of an energy boost. Take a break, maybe even meditate for a few minutes, and send Reiki to yourself by imagining yourself in your mind's eye. See yourself sending Reiki to yourself, and then see and experience the beautiful healing white light of Reiki energy as it envelops your whole body, entering your crown chakra, and bathing every muscle, cell, tissue, and organ of your body with the healing, loving light of Reiki. Your future. Send Reiki to your future self. Go one day, a week, a month, or even years into your future. Think of a certain upcoming event in the future, such as a vacation, retirement, wedding, or just send to the future with no event or time frame in mind, asking Reiki to guide you in your future Reiki practice so you can attract success and happiness to yourself. Sometimes when you send Reiki to yourself in the past, present or future, you will receive a message, an acknowledgement or validation. This may manifest in a positive sound or voice in your head, an image or a successful conclusion to the reason why you sent Reiki to the event or situation, or you may notice or sense a new feeling of calm or positivity. You can use any technique on yourself, in fact it's best to put yourself first in order to learn and practice any technique, but also so that you gain the benefits of Reiki healing. Send Reiki to places, situations and world events or disasters. Reiki can be sent to any place, situation, event or disaster area anywhere in the world. Reiki can be sent for example to You can send Reiki distant healing energy to Mother Earth, which is itself receptive to healing. Hardly a week goes by without some form of disaster being beamed into our homes via 24-hour news channels with images of natural events that harm the earth including tropical storms, tsunamis, fires, volcanoes and earthquakes as well as man-made disasters like forest fires, unnecessary pollution, destruction of rainforests and delicate ecosystems or the illegal poaching of endangered wildlife or whaling. Mother Earth provides us with every basic need we have for sustenance. It is only right that we treat this wonderful planet of ours with love and respect. So when you can, consider giving something back by sending Reiki healing to the Earth. You can send Reiki to specific places on Earth such as a continent, ocean, forest or wherever you are drawn to send the energy. You can also help to heal conflicts and major accidents or mindless attacks such as the following. Road, rail or air traffic accidents. Next time you hear of an accident or pass an accident on the road, you can send Reiki to all the people involved. War Zones. Send Reiki to all the victims of war with the intention of bringing about a peaceful resolution and reconciliation. Terrorist Attacks. Unfortunately, we share the planet with some mindless groups and individuals who have warped senses of reality. Send Reiki to the victims and the relatives and friends of all mindless terrorist attacks. Political Situations. During contentious elections or meetings of powerful groups that can have an impact on millions of people or even the world like the G8 or the UN, you can send Reiki so that the differences among political parties or different ideologies are healed and decisions are made that benefit the higher good of all humanity.
When you send Reiki to any of these events listed above, you will use the same techniques you use in any other distant Reiki healing session. It would be impossible to get permission from everyone involved in such an event or situation. So to preserve your integrity and ethical standpoint about only sending Reiki if you are asked or have received permission to do so, you can intend that Reiki go to all who want it. You're not sending Reiki to any particular individual, but making this healing energy available to those who need it most. If you want to practice sending distant Reiki and don't know where to start, just open the newspaper or turn on a TV news program. You will unfortunately be able to find lots of candidates to practice on. Send Reiki to multiple people, events and situations. As your Reiki practice develops and you become busier with more Reiki treatments, workshops or requests for distant healing, you will need to find creative ways to juggle the workload. One of the ways you can save time while still providing great service to your clients is to send healing regularly to multiple people and or events and situations. For example, you may have several clients overseas who want you to send Reiki to them every day for a month, plus others asking you to send Reiki to events in the future like weddings, etc. Obviously, it would be difficult and too time consuming to provide this service to everyone at separate times. So you will need to combine several requests together and send Reiki to all of them at the same time. It's a bit like typing up and sending an email to one client and then retyping the same notes and sending that to the second client and repeating the process for multiple clients. It could take you all day. As a time saver, you could simply create a generic email, use mail merge software or use the CC, the carbon copy function on your email client and in one go send multiple emails to clients all over the world at the same time, saving you lots of effort and work while at the same time providing the information to all of your clients. A definite win-win. Sending Reiki to multiple clients is exactly the same thing. You get to help more people while at the same time being able to manage your time. A win-win. You can send distant Reiki to lots of people, events, etc. in a number of creative ways, including a Reiki box. Write down the names of the people or situations you are sending healing to, including any times and dates, and put the card or paper with the names into a box, along with any photographs if applicable. Reiki the box regularly and send Reiki to all requests inside the box. Please note that you can use a ceramic bowl or any other object as long as it's intended for Reiki. We use a special wooden box that is easy to hold in both hands and is filled at the bottom of the box with crystals. Keep the healing box in a special place. Consider surrounding it with crystals. Try to set aside a set time every day to send Reiki to the people, events, etc. stored within the healing box. You will find many of your requests for healing stay in there for a few weeks, while others will stay there forever. Remember to include your own wishes, challenges, any personal goals you are working on, any physical issues you are addressing for yourself, etc. Also, not to be forgotten, are family members and friends who are ill or otherwise challenged in life, and who could sure use a Reiki energy boost. Every day or so, read through all the cards in the box and send distant Reiki energy to all the people inside it all at once to help them heal. As you hear back from people with their healing progress and using your own intuition, remove some of the cards once Reiki has completed its work. Crystal Grid. You charge the crystals with Reiki energy and place them in a set pattern and with a specific intention. Crystals are used to enhance the energy sent at a distance. Boards with photos and names of people to be healed. Use a bulletin board or any other type of surface where you can attach the names or photos of people requesting Reiki. You can beam the energy to the request on the board. Finally, remember to share your distant healing experiences with the recipients if appropriate. Many of your clients could benefit from any insights or intuitive information you've received from the distant healing session. You can also benefit from any feedback the recipient gives you on their experience. It could help you fine-tune what you do and the type of technique that works best for you. As with all things Reiki, the key to success is your intention. Reiki 2 Lesson 14 Working with Reiki 2 Empower your goals. Goals make the difference between success and failure in life. Reiki can empower your goals, dreams and desires. Write your goal on a piece of paper. Be specific. A goal should be set in the positive. Include all the facts, dates, names, etc. For example, on Monday the 4th of July 2011, I, John Smith, gained entry into Harvard University to study psychology. If you have read or watched the movie The Secret, you would have heard of the Law of Attraction. In a nutshell, The Secret explains that we can have anything we want in life. We just need to send out that thought or vibration to the universe, and it will deliver all our goals, dreams and desires. By sending out positive energy into the universe, we attract positive results back. It's that simple. It should also sound very familiar to you as Reiki practitioners. The secret or the law of attraction is working with the universal life force. You can too, by utilizing your Reiki skills and knowledge and harnessing the power of Reiki to deliver your wildest dreams and desires.
If you can clearly see in your mind's eye your goals, dreams and desires, and you send it out to the universe, you will attract everything you desire with the power of Reiki. You just need to believe in the power of Reiki. That's the real secret. Draw the full Reiki sandwich over the top of your goal. Reiki the paper for several minutes. Carry the piece of paper with you in your purse or wallet. Reiki the paper several times a day. Remember to add the rider should it be for the highest good. Remember, believe and succeed. The Magician A simple way of sending Reiki is the Magician position. Hold one of your hands in the direction you wish to send Reiki and the other pointing down towards the earth. Preparing to treat a client. Clear any negative energy and raise the vibration of the room by using the Chokure symbol. Draw the Chokure symbol on all the walls, ceilings, floors, healing couch, crystals and candles. When your client arrives, project the Chokure symbol onto their third eye chakra to relax and prepare them for the treatment. Always draw the symbols on your hands before you begin the treatment. Visualize the symbols entering your client's body through each chakra and hand position. Remember to add the rider should it be for their higher good. Positive Affirmations If you're working on a specific treatment, try incorporating positive affirmations. For example, if your client wants to stop smoking, ask your client to silently intone at regular intervals throughout the treatment, I now release the need to smoke cigarettes. You should also intone the same affirmation on each new hand position. Pay particular attention to the third eye chakra. Remember the Sehiki is used for addictions. Alternatively, write the positive affirmation on a piece of paper and have your client hold on to it throughout the treatment. When the treatment is complete, your client can take it home with them and keep it in their purse or wallet. Tell them to read it on a regular daily basis. Scanning the aura. Before you begin a treatment, scan your client's aura. Use your new heightened intuition to sense possible problems or blockages. Sense how the energy beneath your hands or in your palms feel. You may notice a variance in temperature. If you are guided or drawn to a particular position on your client's body, go with it. Remember to trust your intuition. Place your hands over that spot and work to heal and rebalance the distortion in your client's aura. Zapping. When you use the Honsha Zeishonen symbol, you can zap people or situations from afar. Imagine your hand or finger is a laser gun and beam Reiki wherever it is needed. Reiki 2 Lesson 15 Additional Non-Traditional Reiki Symbols the three traditional Yasui symbols cover every eventuality. They are omniscient and omnipotent. However, there are several non-traditional Reiki symbols which have specific purposes and can be used in conjunction with the full Reiki sandwich. These additional symbols are not an absolute necessity. We believe the students should try using the additional symbols in their daily practice and decide for themselves whether they want to incorporate and use them in their future Reiki practice. The Reverse Choker Ray this symbol is drawn in a clockwise direction unlike the traditional Yasui chokurei, which is drawn anti-clockwise. When used together, the two chokureis are similar to the double helix found in DNA. The double helix of the DNA is both clockwise and anti-clockwise. The chakras also radiate outwards from the center of the body similar to the double helix, with a narrow section at the center. The clockwise chokurei connects with heaven, while the anti-clockwise chokurei connects with earth. You could experiment with both chokureis by using the traditional Yasui chokure at the beginning of the Reiki sandwich and the reverse chokure at the end of the Reiki sandwich. You may find it brings balance and additional power to your work. If you do notice a positive difference, you can incorporate it into your practice and daily use. The Zonar. The Zonar symbol represents infinity, timeless, ageless, perpetual and eternal. It is drawn as the letter Z, with the last stroke rising up into an infinity sign, drawn three times across the center of the Z. The symbol is used for past life issues and karmic and interdimensional problems that are difficult to define. Often there are problems and issues manifesting in our present life that are left over remnants from a previous life or lives. The Hearth This is the symbol for love, truth, beauty and harmony. It can be used to dissolve negative patterns we unconsciously use to insulate ourselves from the truth, thus shattering delusion and denial. The half symbol clears and opens the channels to higher consciousness. Often known as the master symbol, as it is used in some initiation ceremonies by Reiki masters. All strokes are from left to right, top to bottom. How to draw the half symbol? Stroke 1 is a horizontal line. Stroke 2 is a vertical line, which forms a cross or crucifix. 
stroke three is drawn downwards at about a 45 degree angle. Stroke four is drawn from the end of stroke three down to the bottom of the cross. Stroke five is the same as stroke three, moving down at approximately 45 degree angle. Stroke six moves down from stroke five to the bottom of the cross also. Stroke seven is drawn as a small circle, as are stroke eight and stroke nine. This completes the half symbol. The fire dragon. Also known as the Tibetan fire serpent, this symbol represents the key energy traveling up the spine from the root chakra. It is used for spinal and back problems and is said to be good for the menopause. To draw the fire dragon, you begin at the base and draw an anti-clockwise spiral two and a half times. Continue the line upwards in a series of waves. Complete the symbol with a horizontal line across the top, drawn from left to right. The fire dragon's surging upward spiral of energy cleanses and joins the chakras. If you can imagine drawing this on a client, you would begin at the base of the spine, move up along the spine until you get to the shoulder blades where the, where the second stroke, stroke two, is drawn across the shoulder blades. The Joray. The Joray symbolizes white light. It is used to release blockages for protection and to transfer healing white light. The symbol can be added to the Reiki sandwich to send healing energy and protection across space and time. This symbol is difficult to draw, so try to project the symbol from your third eye chakra. Draw from top to bottom as shown. Motozainen. Considered a master symbol by Buddhist monks who use it for exorcism. Mota means to go in, while Zainen means to come out. This symbol is used for viruses, infection and AIDS. When the motor goes in, the little squiggle catches the virus or bacteria. The Zainen symbol is then drawn and reverses polarity and leaves the body taking the virus or bacteria with it. You can draw the Reiki sandwich as follows. Chokure, followed by Moda Zainan, followed by reverse Chokure. Lenso Mai. Pronounced Lenso Mai, this symbol represents pure unconditional love and is used for emotional problems and situations. The symbol is normally placed over the heart chakra. Draw the figure eight first, followed by the Dikibo shape. Remember to draw from top to bottom, left to right. Reiku. This symbol is used for grounding and can be used at the end of each Reiki treatment session. Certain Reiki branches use Raku, a Tibetan symbol, to close the connection between teacher and student after attunements. Similar to a lightning stroke, it focuses and grounds energy. This symbol is also incorporated in the Tibetan Daika Mao, Tibetan master symbol, and in an elongated form of the Tibetan fire serpent, which is taught in the third degree. Om. Om is a Sanskrit symbol used for protection, healing and meditation and by different Eastern spiritual practices, including yoga. Om represents the sound of the universe and is frequently chanted. It sounds like Om. Some Reiki branches, including Karuna Reiki, use this symbol. Listening to or chanting the sound Om helps to connect spiritually. Some Reiki masters play Om chanting music during the attunement process or during a healing session. Reminder, always use the Chokure symbol to activate all of the other symbols. Always intone the name of each symbol that you have drawn, visualized or projected onto a subject three times.
Reiki 2 Lesson 17 Combining Reiki with Other Healing Disciplines Reiki can complement and enhance the effectiveness of almost any other method of healing you may currently be working with or may work with in the future. Reiki energy balances the subtle frequencies of the person's energetic body as it's being received, so it can be combined with any other therapy to achieve deeper and more profound healing. In fact, combining healing modalities can help to increase the benefits of a Reiki healing session for the recipient. As clinical hypnotherapists and master practitioners of NLP, we have found combining Reiki with NLP and hypnosis can help to really enhance a client's session by allowing the client to relax deeply and easily with Reiki. So they are open to, at an unconscious level, the positive suggestions of change delivered with NLP and hypnosis. Remember, if you're going to combine healing modalities, you must first explain to your client what you intend to do during the session and get permission from them to use more than just Reiki. You could, of course, just use Reiki and remain with the viewpoint that Reiki will go where it is needed and do what is needed to facilitate change and healing. We have found that when, for instance, a client wants to quit smoking, Reiki and hypnotic suggestion can be quicker and more effective. Below are a couple of examples of how you can combine Reiki with other healing modalities. But remember, you're only limited by your imagination. Reiki and the Art of Focusing Most people today are aware of the direct connection between the body and the mind as it relates to health and well-being. We all store feelings and emotions over our lifetime in our bodies. When these feelings and emotions are left to fester, they can invariably lead to unhappiness, sickness and disease. The body-mind is an early warning system designed to protect us from impending harm and danger. The signs normally express themselves as bodily aches and pains. Instead of listening to the body's early warning system, which is trying desperately to communicate, most people take a painkiller to alleviate and suppress the ailment. Issues, emotions and feelings that need to be dealt with are locked away to cause physical and emotional damage. The body, mind and spirit is thrown into a state of imbalance. The cure for the pain is in the pain. Through the art of focusing, we can communicate with the body-mind and release the blockages and destructive emotions. Health, well-being and balance follows. Learning to communicate and understand your body-mind is vitally important in the search for longevity and happiness. The focusing technique for self-healing. Sit or lie down in a comfortable position. Close your eyes. Focus on your breathing. Begin a normal Reiki self-healing treatment. Work from position 1 through to position 7. When you finish working on the heart chakra, position 7, rest both hands across your chest covering your heart. Focus your conscious awareness inside. Imagine placing a microscopic version of yourself underneath your hands. Feel how safe and relaxed you feel. Allow the miniature version of yourself to travel all over your body, from the tips of your toes to the top of your head. Notice any aches or pains that have appeared. If nothing appears straight away, look again. Often you will find an ache or pain on the second or third run. Place your full awareness into the pain. Focus and stay with it for a few minutes. Say hello to the pain. Thank that part of the body that has come to talk to you today. Notice what colour it is, example red. Notice what shape it is, example square. If that part of the body could communicate with you and could say one word, and only one word, what would it say? Example sad. Focus on the word sad, or any other word that comes up. Ask the word sad when it first entered your body. You will normally invoke a memory. Warning, you may get tearful and emotional. You may want to cry, shout or scream. Let it out. Continue the conversation with that part of the body until you've resolved the problem, emotion or issue. Use Reiki to heal. If you find it's too difficult to talk and continue the conversation, send Reiki to the situation so it can heal it for you with its infinite wisdom. Complete the session with a full self-treatment. On occasions you may find these issues are residues left over from past lives, childhood and times of personal loss and grieving. Use the full Reiki sandwich to heal and remove the emotional and physical pain. This is an extremely powerful technique. Go carefully in the beginning until you have gained confidence and experience with it. If you find it too difficult to work directly with your various issues, write them down on a piece of paper and send Reiki to them. As you release the emotional blockages and residues, you will find a new sense of peace and well-being. Remember to heal yourself first, then your family, then your friends and then others. This technique can be adapted and used to treat others as well. Timeline Reiki This technique is based on a mixture of Reiki and NLP. It allows you to travel into your future and create the life you want for yourself. Sit or lie down in a comfortable position, close your eyes, focus on your breathing. Begin a normal Reiki self-healing treatment. Work from position 1 through to position 7. 
When you finish working on your heart chakra, position 7, rest both hands across your chest covering your heart. Focus your conscious awareness upwards towards the crown chakra. Visualize or imagine a small opening appear in your crown chakra. Float upwards through the opening and hover just above your body. You may find that you need to open your eyes to visualize or imagine this. Look down and imagine your timeline. Typically you will see a line of images relating to past memories and future expectations. Normally the future projects forward while the past extends behind you. Whatever is right for you will appear. Float gently along your timeline into the future. Move forward until you reach the end of your timeline. If your timeline has ended before you can see that you have reached an old age or achieved your full potential, project the full Reiki sandwich out onto the timeline. Take hold of your timeline and stretch it out to add longevity, well-being and a rich, fulfilling future. Look back now along your timeline and review your life. See if you're satisfied with how you have led your life. Did you reach your full potential? Did you make a worthwhile contribution to this world? Are you satisfied that you lived your life to the full? Would you like to change anything about your life? If you find a part or parts of your future timeline you want to change, project the full Reiki sandwich onto that part or parts. Visualize or imagine the infinite wisdom of Reiki, dissolving the unwanted parts of your future and replacing it with a new, more positive, enriching and fulfilling part. Look back along your timeline again and feel, sense, imagine, visualize a happier, more fulfilling future. Envelop your timeline in the healing, guiding light of Reiki. Now look back at the wise old person you will become. Notice the future has a gift for you. It may be words of wisdom or something that is very important to you on a personal level. Take your gift and give thanks to your future self for this wonderful present. Take a moment to assimilate and really appreciate this wonderful gift you've received. Gently float back along your timeline to the present you reviewing your new future timeline along the way until you can come to a stop above yourself in the present time. Look back into your past, see a younger you who once anticipated the present you. Send Reiki back with its infinite wisdom. Then look into your future and see the future you who is expecting you. Send Reiki into your future. Gently float back down now through the opening in your crown chakra. Bring your awareness and your gift back down to your heart chakra beneath your hands. Place the gift you receive from your future wise self into your heart chakra. Feel, sense, experience the new you. Use this gift wisely. Allow the process of transformation and change to begin. Complete the Reiki treatment by finishing all the self-healing hand positions. At your own time and pace, gently open your eyes. Timeline Reiki can be adapted to be used with other people. Reiki 2 Lesson 18 Animal Reiki Techniques As we learnt in the first degree, Reiki can be used on every living thing for healing, personal development, deep relaxation and stress relief. Animals are particularly receptive to Reiki energy. As an advanced Reiki practitioner, we now have the tools and techniques to develop further how we use Reiki on animals, from our own household pets to providing the service professionally to people or organisations that care for and or work with animals. Animal Reiki is an extremely popular and rewarding niche that more and more Reiki practitioners are adding to their Reiki practice. Reiki is a very effective therapy for animals for exactly the same reason it works well on people. You just need to sit your pet cat or dog on your lap while you pet and conduct a Reiki healing session to discover just how happy, receptive and relaxed they become within seconds of the treatment beginning. Animals respond positively to Reiki and you can really help your family pets as well as other animals feel so much better and help them to recover from illnesses, diseases, through labour and from past neglect or abuse. You can give Reiki to animals in a number of situations. When they are ill, Reiki helps the healing process and works with all types of medical veterinarian intervention. When they are young or old, you can use Reiki on an animal of any age or situation. When they've been through a trauma, animals can use loving energy after they've experienced any type of abuse, loss or move, or if they seem to exhibit depression or other behavioural disorders. Even if you don't know what the problem is, you can still use Reiki to help. Rapport and communicating with animals. Animals respond differently to Reiki depending on their type of illness, their personality, and how well they know and trust you. 
There are a number of key indicators to look for so you can better understand and intuitively read if you are in rapport with the animal and it's safe and okay to perform Reiki on the animal. They are as follows. An animal may bark, growl, screech, fly, hiss, buck or run away as a way of telling you it doesn't want to be touched. If this happens and you know the animal is sick or in pain and really needs Reiki, then you can still treat the animal by using distant Reiki or by the zapping or beaming techniques. An animal may let you perform hands-on Reiki, but then after a while shift positions or look at you funny. Move your hands a few inches above the body, scan the aura and other parts of the animal's body, and continue treating the animal with Reiki if you intuitively feel that it's still needed. An animal may tell you it wants Reiki by coming near you when you're giving Reiki to yourself or someone else. If you're in rapport with the animal, you may find it moves itself so you can perform Reiki on the exact spot or position it needs it. So if the animal moves or appears to be fidgeting, just keep your hands in the same position just above the animal's body while it adjusts itself. Once the animal stops moving, gently place your hands straight back down onto the animal and continue the treatment. If at any time you sense a change in the animal's mood or energy and you are concerned for your own safety, stop the treatment immediately and continue sending Reiki from a safe distance. Remember, all these suggestions are just guidelines. It is key that you use your intuition and just go with what you are drawn to do. The animal will sense your positive love and energy towards it and respond accordingly. Preparing to treat an animal with Reiki. If you feel comfortable or you get intuitive messages to get closer to an animal, you can then try performing Reiki with your hands hovering above the pet, moving gradually into an actual hands-on position. Adapt the Reiki 1 and Reiki 2 techniques used for humans for treating animals. Because animals can't give you their express permission for you to perform Reiki, make sure you approach any animal in a slow and respectful manner when starting to give Reiki. Doing so gives the animal the opportunity to understand what you are doing and lets the animal make their feelings known. You may want to start by beaming Reiki to an animal from across the room or sending distant Reiki. These distant techniques may be sufficient for treating an animal and the safest method for you as a Reiki practitioner if you're treating large or exotic animals. Intention, as always, is the single most important factor in the success of an animal Reiki treatment. Your intention should be for the highest level of healing for the animal and that you can be used as a pure channel for Reiki energy. Healing, remember, is not from you but through you. Be clear about your role as a Reiki healer and why you are treating the animal. Animal Reiki Techniques Distant Reiki This type of Reiki can be performed from anywhere, so you don't need to be near the animal to do this. You can use this technique to treat any trauma an animal may have suffered in the past, or to help the animal with an event in the future. Beaming Reiki from across the room When you're working with an animal you don't know, start with beaming to connect you with the animal from a safe distance. You and the animal then can get a chance to connect, to be in rapport with each other before moving closer. It can also be an effective method of treating animals in zoos, aquariums or in the wild. Reiki with hands on hovering over the body. Some pets tolerate this type of Reiki for a longer period of time than hands on Reiki, especially smaller pets where the weight of your hands can be uncomfortable or even painful if they are very ill or distressed. Hands on Reiki. You can adapt the standard human Reiki 1 hand positions for your pets or other animals. While some animals are much smaller, the basic idea of anatomy is the same. Group Reiki. For larger animals, especially horses or large dogs, a few people can perform Reiki simultaneously, sending much love and healing all at once to the animal. You will discover that when you give Reiki to a sick animal, you will also be helping their owner or human companion at the same time. Animal lovers often treat their pets just like their children and get just as distressed when their inverted commas baby is ill or suffering. Just like treating a person, Reiki healing can often help an animal to recover from an illness. When nothing else can be done for the animal in the case of just old age, for example, Reiki can also help the animal to pass peacefully. Reiki doesn't change the natural order of events, but it can help the transition and can also be used to treat the animal's owners with their loss and grief.